So in this video, we're going to talk about asteroid mining. Now, this is the concept that we hear sometimes a lot about, either in, in film, media, uh, companies wanting to mine it. You know, there's often always the famous article that you see, oh, this asteroid is going to be worth a gazillion, quadrillion dollars. But see lots of science fiction simulations yeah, like this. Yeah. This violates a fair number of laws of physics. That spot was firing its rockets but traveling in a straight line. Yeah. You don't need to fire your rockets to travel in a straight line. <laughs> Here's another simulation. Let's see if you can spot the law of physics flaw in this one. <laughs> so there's a mine with a very big mine on a very small asteroid. That's right, yes. And it, I don't know how it turns like that. But then it's flying straight towards the Earth. And as we saw, if you the, want to go to the Earth, you don't point towards the Earth. You're, 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 you're pointing over there. The yeah, that's right. Down. But nonetheless, this is something that's a stock of science fiction. Yes. But it's also something that's you know, actual real mining companies are spending real money researching these sort of things. That's right. And, and it's not a complete joke and people are thinking about it so what we're going to kind of dive in is the practicalities of doing this why it might be a good idea yep uh, and actually look at the cost benefits and what might need to happen to make this a reality because that's the key right space mining isn't about exploration it is about money at the end of the day and if it's not going to be cost effective like any other business it's not going to happen that's right so the first question is why would you bother mining in space i mean we know that yeah. All the inner solar system is made from the same sort of rocks in the protoplanetary disk. They're all made of the same sort of elements in yeah. the same sorts of ratios. There aren't things like unobtainium or kryptonite, new elements in space you don't find on Earth. That's right. All the elements in space are the same as the ones on Earth because we all form from the same rocks originally. Exactly. But I guess that's the key, right? If there are things that we have in space um, that are the same on Earth, but maybe we don't have that many or they're hard to get, maybe that can be one of the arguments? Yeah, so the main argument is that when the big planets formed, like the Earth, they were originally a mix of heavy yep. elements like metals and light elements like rocks. Yep. But it was all molten to begin with. And what happened was nearly all the heavy elements, the iron and the nickel, sank to the middle. Which is why we see some of those heavy elements in the inside of the Earth. Yes, so the Earth has a huge amount of iron and nickel, but most of it's 5,000 <laughs> yeah. kilometers per hour feet. Not quite convenient. No one's going to mine it down there. You'd have to build some sort of submarine to go through the magma for several thousand kilometers. Yeah. It's not going to happen. Um, so... What metal we do have at the surface is relatively little. Yeah. It's a very common element, but most of it's inaccessible. But we get meteorites <laughs> made of heavy elements. This is one sitting in our lobby up at Mount Stromlo Observatory. It, it's my favorite example for can a year six student feel really strong? And the answer is no. And it's magnetic. This is pure nickel and iron. That's right. And it weighs a quarter of a ton. You know, if we have to get the forklift around to move it. Um, so... Why are we getting these lumps of basically pure metal raining down from space? Where are they coming from? And can, can we get some of that good metal? I mean, there aren't enough meteorites. Of course, in historic times, this is how people got their first That's right, steel exactly. swords. It's from meteoric iron. There was very famous Damascus steel actually came quite often from, um, from the compositions of the iron here. Okay. Now, we know that there are some meteorites called M-type or X-type, yep. which we believe are where meteorites like this come from. That's right. No one's actually landed and taken a sample of these things, but based on the light that bounces off them and its spectrum, and also the, how reflective they are at the radio, we think these are probably made of the nickel and iron. That's right. And it's these that these metal iron meteorites come from. And there's a few of them that we think exist out there. There's not the, just they're one. They're one of the more rare types of asteroid. That's right. They're quite common in meteorites because they survive the plunge through the atmosphere very well. Um, but they are out there. Yep. And then um, by quite a few, there are you know, many millions of asteroids. So. Yes. You know, 5% of them is still an awful lot of lumps of these metal floating in space. And we believe that what happened was that you originally formed these things by lumps of yep. rock crashing together until it all melted. And just like in the Earth, the metal fell to the middle. Mm -hmm. But then it cooled down being a small lump of rock, it solidified. Yep. And then at some point there was a collision and got blown to pieces. Ah, uh, okay. This is not entirely sure, but this is yeah. a plausible story for what happens. And the lumps that were originally from the middle have now come to the outside. Yes, so this is a way in which you can get that lovely heavy metals and get them floating all by themselves. So instead of digging them... 5,000 kilometers deep in, in this, it's okay. done it for you. Yes, it's just lying around an ember of basically the same stuff that's in the core of the Earth, only floating freely in space, ready for our miners to get the itchy fingers. 